It's now time for the launch of the GP, GDPRD's stock taking report, which has been done to prepare for and to follow up from the Food Systems Summit. And it, uh, if you're not aware, it's actually on the donor's contribution to food systems. And in this final session, we're going to hear initially from Jim Woodhill, who's director of Agri-Food Nexus Consulting and honorary research associate at the Environmental Change Institute, University of Oxford, who's fed in hugely into this. And then we'll hear from the co-chairs of the GDPRD, Tristan Armstrong, who met at the beginning, and Conrad Ryan, who's waiting in the wings, as you can see Conrad there. And you'll also be able to send in your thoughts and questions. Continue to send those in via the chat box or through the Q&A box so we can see it more directly. So that's going to be the final half hour of this session. Um, but for now, let me uh, hand over to Jim, who's been listening quietly. Over to you, Jim Woodhill. Fantastic. Thank you, Henry. I think you can uh, hear me okay. Absolutely. Yes. Loud and clear. And beautifully framed with that. all those books in the background. Tremendous. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, and thanks so much to our panellists and, and to Jemima. A very, very interesting discussion that I think really feeds into the work that the Global Donor Platform will be doing uh, going ahead from the, from the Food Systems Summit. Let me just uh, share my screen here. Right, I think that should be working, correct, Henry? Y y yes, very much indeed. I can see everything. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, look, what, what I'd like to do is, um, as briefly as I can, just give a little bit of an overview of what is in the stock taking report. And you'll discover that it aligns very nicely with a lot of the comments that have already been made this morning. So I can probably skip over some of the things that uh, I was intending to, to say. Um, so firstly, just a little background of this. This was really a way of the uh, Global Donor Platform engaging in the Food Systems Summit and setting a, a context in terms of mapping out how donors are currently contributing to food systems. Um, also recognising that perhaps not all stakeholders involved in the Food Systems Summit recognise the sort of roles and functions that donors play, so making that more available, and also creating a basis or a foundation from which to move ahead in thinking about how donors may want to shift and change what they're doing in relation to the outcomes of the Food Systems Summit. Um, in doing the report, we drew on uh, information from the uh, DAC um, data. We had interviews with uh, most of the donors in the platform. We did a fairly solid review of donor websites and reviewed a whole bunch of recent reports. Um, I guess the starting point really was taking this food systems perspective and perhaps just to emphasize that this is much more than just the latest bit of jargon um, and much more than just semantics. I think as we've heard very strongly already today, it really signals the need for a much more integrated approach uh, to how we're tackling issues of health, climate, the environment, poverty, um, gender issues, uh, and, and a whole much longer list of, of really critical factors that are going to affect the achievement of the SDGs. It also signals the need to put more emphasis on the consumption end of what's happening and in the midstream from farmers fields to uh, consumers fork and all of the work and all the M M MS uh, small and medium scale enterprises that happens in that space. It gives us more attention about some of the trade-offs across the food system and importantly a food systems perspective uh, brings attention that what happens in all countries is very interconnected. So I think it helps to link some of the issues around poverty and rural development into a much bigger global agenda that I think is also very uh, important in terms of how we can tackle some of the issues affecting the most vulnerable and the most poor people in the world. Um, in our discussions with donors, they sort of noted that uh, many of them are adopting and integrating a much more food systems thinking into their work, but also recognising that it's perhaps early days, particularly in trying to get this sort of integration working in programs at a country level. And we've heard about some of the challenges of achieving coordination there. It's also perhaps worth uh, noting that there is still a very significant data gap in terms of being able to take an overall food systems perspective. Um, in terms of some of the data I'll present in a moment, we used a whole lot of DAC areas and codes and they're listed on the right there, I won't go through them, but particularly linking in the food security and emergency food aid issues with the investments in agriculture. 
in talking with donors and looking at what's going on, we identified seven key areas of donor contribution. Of course, the huge amount of work that's going on in supporting country programs and projects, the overall support for UN organisations, the food systems governance platforms and networks, whether it's a CFS, whether it's regional platforms or even national platforms, a lot of work happening through NGOs and civil society, the critical area of research and innovation that has been talked about quite extensively this morning, of course, the critical area of finance and mobilising finances, and finally, the private sector and market development. So these were the seven areas where we identified that donors make a, a significant contribution to food systems. Just a few uh, snapshots of some of the data that's in the report. We've already heard this morning about how food systems represents about an 8% of ODA contribution. In absolute terms, that's gone up over the last few years, but its percentage um, in terms of uh, ODA hasn't changed over a, a decade. Um, perhaps more interestingly, it's uh, worth looking at what's changing with agriculture. So absolute amounts of funding for agriculture have increased, but as a percentage, it hasn't gone up. In fact, it's dropped slightly. But as you can see in this graph, quite significantly, emergency food aid has gone up quite dramatically um, over the last decade, which I think sends a, an important signal and that relates to some of the issues that have been talked about this morning. Um, if you want to look into the report, you can see how the funding flows through recipient governments, but also to emphasise that a significant amount of money does actually flow through donors and the private sector. In doing this work, we looked at uh, the investment profiles of a whole lot of different donors, and I think this is interesting in terms of looking at where donors can be collaborative and recognising that there is a significant diversity in approach, thematic focus, and geographic focus. So you'll find this information, particularly in the annex to the report. Um, you'll also find in the report, ODO flows by donor and recipient region, and I won't spend any time on, on this, but it's there in the report to look at. In terms of the scale and breadth of funding, I mean, if we recognise that the global food system is worth some 10 trillion or more, of course, 8% of ODA is a relatively small amount, which comes back to the discussions we've been having today about the need for much more catalytic approaches to raising finances. We also saw though that there's a vast range of initiatives being supported. We've heard the discussion about you know, 13,000 different activities supported by donors of less than that 0.5 million. If you look at everything that's been funded, it's an interesting question about whether there are really any big gaps or whether there's actually a fairly broad spread of what's being funded. But clearly additional resources are needed to achieve SDG2, as we've heard this morning. And there's a question, I guess, around a sort of balance in the best use of these finances. And of course, this raises all the questions about how to best align with the Food System Summit outcomes. We also looked at some 40 different reports, some 840 different recommendations. And I guess the point here is that much of what needs to be done is relatively well known. The big challenge is how do you bring that about? How do you go about getting these sort of recommendations implemented? And we will be developing a database of these recommendations that will be available on the Global Donor Platform website. So let me just uh, close off here with uh, four key messages. And I guess this will be reiterating and emphasizing quite a lot we've already heard this morning. I think the first one is that overseas development assistance underpins the overall global response capability to food systems issues whether it's bringing people across cultures and countries to talk about the issues, whether it's the work of the CFS at a global level, um, whether it's the integrated research and coordination that happens through the CGIR. And many of these benefits um, have a significant global benefit, not just for countries with, uh, uh, well, developing countries or low and middle income countries, which is the focus of donors. So I think accepting and recognizing the much greater global benefit a lot of what donors invest in has a big influence on the overall governance structure for food systems response. And there's a big question here about whether that architecture is right for the 21st century. We've talked a lot today about the importance of coordination and a food systems approach makes that even more important, but uh, perhaps worryingly, we do see this trend towards perhaps more bilateral aid, these large numbers of small country level projects. Oh. Sorry, not sure what's happened there. Um, 
But there is, if you look at this, much opportunity for greater coordination in all sorts of ways, in bringing countries together at the, or bringing donors together at the country level and led by in-country processes, by linking across researchers, by the engagement with private sector. So there's really no shortage of opportunities for how that coordination could, in many ways, quite easily be uh, strengthened. And I think Andrew has mentioned the importance of sort of brokering partnerships to help that happen. Enhancing food systems resilience will obviously be very, very critical in response to climate change, but we've also seen how critical that is in response to COVID. Um, so how do we uh, shift this uh, increasing um, level of uh, emergency food aid and put in place some of the deeper structures and changes that can actually mean that we build a resilience rather than actually having to invest in uh, or fund uh, a response to crises. Um, Food obviously is the number one priority in any crisis situation and tackling uh, this and building resilience obviously requires a food systems approach that integrates with a whole range of broader uh, development goals. And so finally, just to the main other main point out of the report is the issue around catalyzing systemic change. Um, how can donor support to tackle the underlying structural constraints to change, whether that's the broader sort of societal understanding around food systems, whether it's the way subsidies are used, whether it's the way that uh, technology is driven and enabled to support those who most need to access it. How can donor funding be most catalytic in terms of driving other investment that is um, inclusive, sustainable, uh, responsible? Um, and perhaps a point that's, that's come up perhaps uh, tangentially is how can donor in in interventions make sure that they align with how complex systems uh, operate, that things don't always work in a straightforward linear way. So how can you build in the flexibility uh, to make sure donor funding is responsive and adaptive? Um, integration, integrating technical and policy solutions. And finally, what's the focus that's needed on getting the right processes of change and bringing people together at the local level, at the national level, at the global level to actually drive all the sorts of things that have been talked about today and recognising in the end that it's people that make the difference, it's the relationships between people and organisations that are going to drive all of this. So what is this process of change that perhaps needs more attention around the idea of catalyzing systemic change? So let me leave it there for um, reactions from our global donor platform co-chairs or to answer any questions from the audience. Uh, thank you very much, Henry. Thank you very much indeed for that, uh, Jim. Tremendous. I mean, that's quite a piece of work, <laughs> but I mean, it's been very important in the, as far as stock taking is concerned because we've talked a lot with our panelists and our participants. We've had an awful lot of um, engagement, which is, which is tremendous. But at the same time, it was very, very important, I think, to feed all of that in, let it percolate, and then actually say, where are we at the moment? You know, how does this relate to what is actually being done right now? So I'm delighted to bring in the co-chairs of the GDPRD, Tristan Armstrong and Conrad Rhein, and uh, they're going to respond to what you've just uh, given us, uh, Jim. And also I invite uh, people, as you just did, uh, our delegates, we've still got a good number of people on the platform now to uh, pop in their questions in the Q&A box or reflections in the chat box, because we've got a, a lot of uh, uh, potential uh, for, for real change here, and we've got to use it and feed it into the Food System Summit and the white paper. So let's, let's do that now. But now for now, let me hand over to Tristan and Conrad. Thanks. Thanks very much, Henry, and thanks, Jim. Um, look, that was a really speedy but comprehensive overview of a pretty fascinating uh, bit of analysis. Uh, it's pretty rich, um, and and I think you know will really contribute to uh, donor dialogues. You know, now going through the Food System Summit and, and obviously developing that white paper uh, in the wake of the summit, and really building on some of the fantastic ideas that we've heard in tonight's event or today's event for, for most of you um, uh, to help us reimagine uh, you know how we can work better uh, to drive more systemic change uh, and and I think you know there's a there's, there's obviously been you know a really broad uh, there's a really broad suite of ideas suite of ideas there many of which you touch on in the report 
and, and also some really startling figures. I mean, I, I do feel that overall, while we as donors clearly recognise the key issues and we recognise we need, um, you know, to address those issues, we know, we know the what, but we're just not much good at the how. Uh, and, 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 you know, as you point out, and, and I've looked in, in more detail, obviously, at, at some of those figures, and I really encourage other people listening online to have a look at some of those uh, those um, visuals that, that are in the report, they're pretty powerful. Um, and, and, and I do think without sort of substantial change, we will continue to drift rather aimlessly and incoherently, uh, you know, away from achieving our, our targets from, from a human development and an environmental perspective. And, and really to, to being able to respond to climate change through, uh, you know, through, through the use of, of, of aid support, of uh, development support. You know, and, and I think that the report really highlights that, you know, there's been a, a worrying lack of global ambition. I think 8% of, of ODA is, is a pretty small number for a sector which touches a vast area of the planet and which, which actually interacts with some of the poorest um, and most underprivileged people. Uh, and, you know, people on, 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 on whom, you know, we all, uh, we all rely as, as food producers. Uh, you know, and, and I think that the, the, obviously the, the key point for me in, in, in that presentation was just the great proliferation of small, disconnected, small value projects, uh, which, which, you know, I think obviously speak great volumes. And I think Perda and, and other people mentioned this in the, in the plenary. Uh, you know, these are driven by our own, uh, our own uh, 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 drivers uh, as donors and, and, and not really the the, uh, the genuine uh, and 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 comprehensive uh, um, uh, kind of uh, desire to actually assist. Um, so we need, we obviously need a great deal more harmonisation, uh, and, and but the issue is is how obviously and and, and thanks for all of the, the the folks around the table tonight who've who've really um, helped us move that forward. You know the. I guess uh, the other real key takeaway from me, Jim, is just the rise in emergency response uh, funding. And I think that that, that really tells a, a really worrying picture. That trend is, is consistent over a decade. Uh, we are seeing it where we are. Uh, it, it, it reflects a collective failure, right, to do, to do more, not just to spend more, but to do more, uh, to, to assist um, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the food system of the world transform. And I think it really should be a wake up call. Uh, on, a positive, on the positive side, I guess the report highlights that donors have, you know, a unique mandate and responsibility and, 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 and you know, for shaping and influencing the way things go and, and that we, we care and, and, and we're doing this, you know, we're, we're, we're meeting in forums like this, we're discussing stuff, we're, we're taking that and we're trying to make it happen uh, through, through our, um, our, our initiatives and through our collaborations. You know, the ideas we embrace, the policies we implement, you know, they're critical for shifting the, the, the food system. And, and other actors, you know, they, they'll look to us um, for direction. They'll look to us for leadership. And, and they'll particularly do that when we're, when we're working together and we're, we're proudly working together. I think that that, that is a, a really key point. Um, you know, and we do need to support those people in other sectors and, and, other, and other parts of, of the food system, you know, to, to strengthen the enabling environments, to reduce the risks faced by, by, by people who can often not afford to take big risks as we transition those food systems. Um, farmers who can't borrow, uh, farmers who you know, will have to change what they do and are fearful, quite rightly, um, about change. Uh, you know, how do we you know, in, empower investors to adopt new ideas and technologies and, and, and drive that empowerment through, really importantly, uh, you know, to, to, to women in, in the food system? Because without that, we just won't succeed. Uh, I mean, I wrote a few other little notes as you were speaking. I don't want to take too much time. I realise we've only got a few minutes left, but I think that um, you know we need to we need to resource harmonisation. I think that's a key point that came out a number of times today. And you know that harmonisation is difficult. It's it's transactional. It requires effort. It requires commitment. But we have to balance that against the enormous potential cost of not cooperating effectively. I mean, if we fail to do more now, our future budgets will be completely overwhelmed by emergency response expenditure. You know? and, and you know, we can't allow that to happen. We've got to, we've got to do more now. So um, 
you know, I guess uh, that's that's prob they're probably my, my key points. Um, you know, obviously stronger collaboration uh, and, and providing people with, you know, really understanding the risks, providing people with real options that, that they can take forward and doing that in a way that, 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 uh, um, that plays to, to, to country level priorities and to community level priorities and not just a donor priority. So I think the paper is great. It covers a lot of important ground. It's incredibly timely as we consider ideas to take forward. Um, and I really want to thank you, Jim, for the really hard work that you've done um, and, and the really valuable contribution that you've made to this debate. Over. Over. <laughs> And Jim, that's a nice hero gram for you, as we say in this part of the world. But Con I can see Conrad looking at me, smiling. And Conrad, I want to hear from you, from uh, you, your point of view, your co-chair alongside Tristan. And um, you wear a different hat, of course, a EU hat. But um, yeah, your thoughts, please, on this big piece of work that Jim and his team has done, the stock taking. Indeed, a huge piece of work. And many thanks, Jim, for that excellent presentation. And thanks a lot to Tristan for sharing his insights. This uh, stock-taking report goes far beyond an overview and analysis of donor investment in food systems. In fact, it very clearly illustrates how central food is both to poverty and many other development issues. And it thoughtfully covers the concept of food systems, from the production to the consumption of food. And this report will serve as a good basis for the work of the donor community, United Food GDBRD, in responding to the outcomes of the food system side. I would like to highlight a few particular issues. Let me start with coordination. Donor coordination is absolutely crucial to catalyze systemic change and needs to be stepped up. I think we here heard this very clearly today. My vision is to strengthen alignment of programming and funding through the deliberations facilitated by the GDBRD. And this global coordination, which should also involve the partner countries, and we heard that aspect several times as well today during the panel, will help to achieve greater and more targeted effectiveness, which is particularly critical at the country level. Allow me to elaborate a bit more on the role of the platform in all of this. This week, with the organization of two very relevant events in the run up to the Food Systems Summit, the platform has clearly demonstrated its convening power. I would like to recall that at the GDBRD board meeting about a year ago, Agnes Kalibata highlighted that the Food Systems Summit should be not just another meeting, but rather a turning point with not only novel commitments, but rather real action as its follow up. Donors will need to have a response to the outcomes of the summit, and the GDBRD is very ready to help to align views across the donor community. I refer to catalyzing systemic change, which involves several interrelated areas, such as the de-risking of finance, investment in research and innovation, engagement with the private sector, and promotion of enhanced resilience mechanisms. And again, coordination is crucial in all of these areas. Therefore, concluding in times of shrinking public budgets, combined with the need for donors to target investments in a world far from ideal, with environments on the ground as complex and different as they can possibly be, there is a strong role and huge need for the GDBRD. More now than ever before. Thanks a lot. Over to you, Henry. Thank you very much indeed, Conrad. So, uh, Jim, you've heard what the two co-chairs have had to say about um, your piece of work. Let me hear what you make of their responses. And also, I suppose, a, a thought on what we've heard today. And, if, is, and is it pushing us closer to where we need to be for the Food Systems Summit? Yeah, thanks, Henry. Look, I think the discussion today has been very encouraging in recognition of the sort of challenges and the issues that need to be addressed. The, the need to think more about systemic change, I think, has been a, a you know, very critical discussion today. We need to go a bit deeper in how that actually gets implemented. And I think the growing commitment we've heard about the need for, uh, for coordination also becomes important. But again, that has to go beyond just the words. We have to actually get the processes right at the local and the country level for that to happen. And of course, the UN agencies have a very critical role to play at that at the country level. 
Um, but I think, you know, really investing in those processes at that level and investing in the sort of brokering uh, needs, to, needs to go forward. So I think, you know, sometimes there's a temptation to just invest in the, the hard parts of donor investment, perhaps not invest enough in some of the processes that put the oil in the wheels to make it all work together. So I think some sort of thinking about that right of balancing is needed. And I think we then look forward to moving on to developing the white paper that's been discussed, which will try and flesh out in further detail some of the issues that have been raised here in close consultation with all of the donors and all of those that have been involved in the, in the Food System Summit. So I think we sort of look forward to, to taking that piece of work forward. And perhaps also just to mention that the donor platform has developed a declaration of intent, which will cover a number of these issues and which will also be launched uh, prior to the to the summit. And uh, just before I stop there, let me also just please acknowledge the, the great support and work from our Crystal Jones and Sylvia Tenio, who also worked on developing this report uh, with quite quite a number of nights uh, effort as well. So thanks thanks to them. Excellent. But let's close with our co-chairs just finally, um, Tristan and Conrad, you can take this in whichever order you want. So what happens between now and the Food Systems Summit, which is looming large? What happens now, Tristan? Thanks. Um, thanks, Henry. Look, I think, um, you know, we'll need to, to, to really absorb um, what we've heard today um, and, and think about, you know, a, a sensible path, pathway forward in terms of taking, distilling the key ideas and, and taking them up through our membership to, uh, uh, to, 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 to the dialogues that are going on um, uh, at, the, at the summit and beyond. I mean, I personally think that it's really what happens after the summit that's going to count. The summit will be over in, in, a, in a couple of hours. Sadly, it's going to be a virtual event. Um, it's hard to get too excited about that. Yeah. Uh, but I think that, you know, it's, it's, it's these sorts of conversations that I think are the real drivers of change. Uh, we'll hear from our leaders uh, and they'll say some, you know, uh, some, some sage, they'll have some sage thoughts. Um, but, it, but it's these working level discussions uh, that, that, that really um, are the ones that are, are going to shift um, the system. And so I would really encourage those of you online, those of you who've joined, uh, to stay engaged, uh, to keep track of our website. We'll send updates to you in terms of next steps for the development of the white paper. We'd like as many of you to be involved in that process as possible. And we'd certainly like <clears throat> to, to, to ask you what you how you would like to engage with us on that. You know, would you like another event like this or similar to this, where we take you through uh, um, you know, where we've gone since this conversation and 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 you know what we've learned through the summit uh, and seek your feedback on that. You know, a document should be live uh, and, and it should be about people coming together and exchanging ideas in a in a you know in a, in, a, in a constructive and 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 um and, you know and, and dynamic way. So um you know I th that's that's the whole point of this platform. You know, it's not to keep still, it's to move. Uh, and so uh, so we want to we want to engage you in that process. Um, and, and following the white paper on, on how we can help you um, take some key messages back to your executives, uh, back to your organisations, and get them, hopefully, to start seeing things slightly differently. Okay. Final word to you, Conrad. No, I mean, time is up, but thanks a lot to the Secretariat, to Tristan, to Henry, to everybody for making this possible. I think it has been a huge success, and now... Uh, the ball is in our hand, and as Tristan rightly said, we will be engaged and you can count on us and there will be a lot of follow-up. So thanks a lot and a nice afternoon, good evening, good morning to everybody <laughs> who participated. Bye. Excellent. Thank you very much, Conrad. Thank you very much, Tristan. Thank you very much, Jim.